Okay. Yeah. I think now it's working. Shall we start from group one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think now it's working. Jennifer and Alireza, do you want to start your um uh, uh, yes, yes, we would start just a minute. Uh, okay, no worries. Hello to your Hans and Shai and uh, all your participants and uh, all uh, dear friends. Uh, we are uh, going to start our presentation uh, about the works and uh, analyses that uh, we uh, got during uh, the last session. Uh, I'm trying to just uh, present uh, uh, the flat and simple slide that we try to get an analysis from from it. And after that, uh, Jennifer would an effort uh, to uh, present a boundary surface that <clears throat> uh, it is a little uh, complicated uh, from the simple slide. Uh, can I share the screen? Sure. I think so. Okay. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. True? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had a concept uh, for just the um, designed slab uh, about uh, having a polygon that it has uh, five elements. Uh, with the concept of uh, this post-pandemic uh, future that we have, and we should uh, uh, have a union of five continents and uh, just getting this lab uh, over just uh, five columns uh, that uh, it is uh, uh, strong and uh, somehow we have it uh, in just uh, five angular that it is mentioning uh, for. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, we found the middle parts of uh, every element and uh, we getting uh, just uh, some circu uh, circular uh, parts uh, for having uh, some curves that get the slab more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we tried to get it, get it a little complicated with uh, having a hole uh, in this lab uh, to uh, just uh, saying uh, uh, what, uh, what would be the result. Uh, and after that, uh, we get the analysis right here, if I can uh, show, yes. This is here. Uh, we had a surface uh, that, that we introduced uh, to the uh, program as our uh, boundary surface. And uh, with uh, five <laughs> columns that we introduced in, in uh, our program and components as our uh, columns. And uh, with uh, getting the analysis with uh, just, uh, I think, the iterations, a bit uh, 40 iterations, and the resolution, uh, we, uh, we had uh, just uh, 60 resolutions. 
and uh, because I have the problem with uh, CUDA and my graphic card, uh, I uh, we try to use just the CPU processor. Uh, and uh, we uh, finally had the theme layouts and uh, uh, other uh, conclusions uh, that we get from the uh, uh, components and uh, the analysts. Uh, we tried uh, also to have it with without the hole and we, uh, we can see the difference between the uh, analysts uh, that we had a hole uh, on the part and uh, without it. Uh, that we have uh, four columns also here and uh, finalization was like this that we had uh, some simple lines and directional lines uh, in the center of our slab. Okay, uh, if uh, uh, there isn't any question, my uh, teammate Jennifer can go on and uh, present the complicated, a little complicated uh, slab that we had some set of hyper. Okay, I should stop sharing. Thank you to our friends for hearing us. Um, can I start sharing then, if there are no questions? Sure. Okay, um, so what we wanted to explore after the first analysis was uh, we wanted to, I mean, it was pretty clear that we can work only with flat slabs while uh, going for the design that we are having in mind. But uh, we wanted to explore in the possibility of having multiple flat slabs on different planes. So mm -hmm. like the criteria was mentioned that it should be a flat slab, but it was um, not mentioned that it should exactly be on an XY plane. So we wanted to take it as an opportunity and further develop the design. So the boundary that we had in mind was uh, for the pavilion concept that we have. Um, just a minute. Was um, to go for a surface uh, like this, mm -hmm. but it's not possible to directly uh, go for the topology optimization or for a surface like this. So what we did was uh, we got some points from it on the surface. And from those points, we constructed some uh, linear, I mean, um, geometries that was rigid. And from that, we developed a curve, which is an OPS curve from the um, vertices of the geometry. And since uh, the criteria was that it should definitely be planar, we projected it onto the normal plane of the curve, a surface from the curve. And we could finally come up with a geometry that looks something like this. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, something we are looking to explore. Like uh, we are not sure if this is possible, but this is a, a, some idea that we have in mind for the boundary and would like to uh, get an input from you whether uh, we could proceed with the network analysis and the beam layout for a slab that is planar, but not exactly on the XY plane. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's the idea we wanted to present. Okay, great. Um... So I, I think I actually have some some comments also to to the to the other thing. I think the the column supports were not um, were not in the in the structural topology optimization. It seems there was no no beams going to the columns. But uh, let's let's go to that uh, a bit later. Um, so for this one, I'm I think it's actually. A pretty cool um, exploration, right? Um, um, the question is how how would you put it into the context of um, of um, multi-story timber construction? Um, 
where maybe I'm not sure if we need to be very strict on this, but um, but I think it would be at least interesting to see whether there is a possibility with leaving the same kind of um, let's say conceptual idea, right, and exploring how these things could be um, stacked on top of each other, right, and how these these could kind of create uh, landscapes of um, of um, habitable space, right? I think um, what I would also stress um, is that I guess it would be most interesting from a from a um, um, point of view of addressing the challenges that occur in timber construction at the moment. If those um, if those kind of cobblestone shaped um, elements, right? They have like a varying number of columns um, supporting them, where where then you have really um, kind of irregular situations of the of the support uh, supporting conditions. And. I guess um, in order to be fair to all the other participants, I would I, maybe I would ask to to see if you can get like a similar maybe spatial experience with um, with a more flat um, um, arrangement. But uh, but I, I guess I guess it also is very very nicely designed. So I think it's quite. Uh, Quite exciting to see. One, one thing I want to add is that uh, if you want to use the tools that we provide uh, yesterday and also today, actually the tools may. I, I didn't type, test the, the, if they could work on the implants. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think if you want to use the tools, you may try, but it's you may encounter some problem. I think I, I, I didn't try try that, but uh, all the development is just based on a, a flight a flight plan. Just Okay, so we will try to uh, enhance and uh, promote it, uh, as you said, uh, for uh, tomorrow, for having just in uh, some levels and uh, uh, having it uh, combining with each other in uh, different levels, uh, as you said. Yeah, um, and I guess, should we, should we just quickly have a look at, uh, back at your screen, Ali Reza? Because... Um, <laughs> What I didn't understand what you meant. Can you can you share your screen again? Yes, yes. And which part of the code and uh, components do you want to see? Um, is, yeah, uh, ju just this. And now, um, can you turn on the columns? For the columns. Okay. We have it uh, right. Here, uh, I do you want that I turn on the meshes or just this? Uh, uh, yeah. Let's let's um, let's keep the meshes for now. Just show the network and the columns. It, can you also show the result as the diagrams? The result here. Yes. The uh, uh, I really didn't get a really clear. Uh, Maybe it's it's a blurry, but uh, yeah. I really didn't add a really clear one. Just let me add it. Uh, I had all these uh points in just gray. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can can you turn to another? The uh, top view of perspective. Okay, yes, surely I have. I can have. Uh, 
I don't have any topology optimizations that uh, it, it is defines every cells in uh, one or zero uh, here as uh, I, uh, I have uh, seen uh, during last session. Uh, but uh, with, uh, I try to have uh, just some directions and defining the columns and the slab uh, here um, with uh, just two options having whole or uh, just a, a flat slab. Uh, I got this analysis uh, that we have right here. Yeah. So I guess I guess the column supports were not really registered for the simulation. Because uh, I try to can just, you, uh, can have you? resolutions uh, mm -hmm. a little uh, more for having an accurate model, but uh, it uh, takes a lot of time to uh, getting uh, the uh, this computed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I canceled the computation uh, process and. Uh, as I said, it is enough having this. Okay, so maybe maybe we go on, um, and uh, maybe one of us will can have a quick look at the at the script, see if it works for us. I think uh, in, in general, I think the concept of um, of this kind of five um, different th uh, different uh, plates coming together, I guess that's. Um, that's definitely also um, somewhat of a um, meaningful story to tell, right? And I, I don't see it so much. Um, um, I guess that could be also very much uh, combined with the with the kind of approach that uh, Jennifer took. Uh, just to try to. Uh, remind you that if you uh, see the structure analyze result in, in the preview, and you you don't see a result like uh, we we present on on previous slides, the the most common reason is that uh, the model is not uh, fully optimized. You need more iteration. Uh, although it may be slower for you. Hmm. Okay, so we should uh, hunt the uh, number of iterations, for example, to... Yeah, you uh, you actually, you can run it multi-times. Just click on the run button multi-times. So maybe, maybe we go on to the next group. You, Ali Reza, you test it, right? And if there's still some, uh, if you still don't get uh, get the get the thing running, um, we can also do a, we just do a kind of breakout room later, where one of us uh, runs you through the, through the thing. But it, I guess it might just so it might just be because the the process uh, the the GPU is not supported, I guess. And then it might yes. just take very long to, to really get the get meaningful result. Okay. Next group, I would say. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that would be George and Chris. If you're here. Can George? you guys hear me? Yeah. Great. So let me share my screen. Thank you so much. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, I'll start with the concept and then uh, Chris and I will go into, we did some, we did some tests on our edge, on our boundary condition. So the, the concept really starts, maybe I can remove this. The concept really starts from biology. So we started looking at different uh, single cell organisms. Uh, and how you know these could be uh, looked at as, as an individual, which could then multiply into many um, different elements. Um, so, when looking at the single cell, we're also similar to the first group. We're looking at carving out 
spaces from the edge condition. So it could be a positive, negative, positive, neg negative. Uh, in order to uh, really take advantage of uh, the definitions of us, and we weren't looking to have a regular configuration of the columns. So um, the columns are, you know, we gave it a parameter to be located at a maximum of a 3.5 from the edge, uh, but it didn't, in a regular fashion. So we would populate, we could either populate um, in a random way or, or choose, you know, in a manual way. The next step from this is really to start looking at how it can work as a system, both horizontal, horizontally and vertically. By, doing, by looking at its, its relationships horizontally, we start getting these interesting voids in between the slabs, but you also start getting connections between this irregular placement of the columns. So while we did just for now look at the single module, we think it would be interesting to see how they how these um, slab structures start spanning across one element from another. Um, I'll just introduce the boundary condition. Maybe I can go to the model super quickly. Uh, so we kind of rationalize this. We think there may be a more, maybe an opportunity to make it a bit more playful, but I think the concept remains to start carving out spaces and combining uh, them together. Now we, we did have a first, a quick look at what that would possibly mean with the ISO curves. Uh, this one was the first, this one was the second, uh, but uh, I think we both agreed that uh, we wanted to continue with Topos um, as the main analysis. And uh, we both tried several iterations. My computer was crazy slow. Uh, so I kept it at 50 and Chris uh, went up to 100, and uh, maybe maybe I'll pass it on, and I can show the model after. Sure. Chris. Yes. Um, there is some permanent uh, first results of uh, of one of our structures where you can clearly see uh, uh, see the beam pattern being generated. Um, quite as in detail. Um, can you go to the next slide? Um, the, uh, we, when we try, try to convert it towards meshes uh, and towards the, the center lines, that's uh, still, I think, a bit of work to be done. Um, yesterday and today, um, we already uh, had a better pattern in, in there, but it seems that the, yeah, the current module uh, can need some improvements. And I'm happy to share some feedback uh, with you, uh, Chai, uh, Chai, uh, about that. Some ideas for it. Um, what you see then is um, is one of the five module, modules where you can clearly see some bigger beams and with branching off and, uh, and it starts to generate some tiny columns. And in the next image, um, you can also see that it started to create some intermediate holes. I increased the element size towards five uh, over height. Um, and that will also start to get rid of material in between. And I'm not quite sure if that matches with the timber slab pattern we are trying to uh, achieve um, because it may be harder to fill up. Um, that's why after this iteration, we, we went back towards three elements over height so that it always is, is completely filled. Um, that's definitely something where I would like to have your feedback on. Um, and this, yeah, in these images, um, the factor field for me as a structural engineer, it was really nice to see that you clearly see the tension and compression changing in the middle of the span to watch where uh, uh, where the columns are. That you clearly can see the factor field and how the how the forces are flowing. Within blue, uh, tension, red, uh, red, the compression. Um, and then we add to the uh on the uh, i think on the next slide some puzzles uh when i was looking at the foreign art pattern to to see how we can get the lines out of there um and that's i think well what i recognize there is that when there are intermediate shapes or when the 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 generated uh iso lines are completely disconnected and there's intermediate space in between flowing continuously then the current tools work well but when they have some enclosed areas, um, the pattern will fail um, mm. generation of the intermediate lines. But I think that just as short of great. Um, I was able to solve it in Grasshopper after, uh, after it, but, and just ignoring the note. 
just something where we can talk about in more detail, I think. And, and I'll just add a last thing that um, while we were interested in the horizontal uh, modularity and how these beams would connect from one another, we were also interested in uh, looking, if, if time permitting, on two different approaches on its vertical stacking. So the columns could extend vertically and you would, you would replicate that mm -hmm. same uh, pattern. Or uh, the second approach, which may be more interesting, is, is seeing how you could alternate uh, those columns and how they would influence, always influence the level below. Thanks. Yes, and towards extending and connecting these modules, I was really wondering, um, now you have the boundary conditions for a column where all directions are fixed. And if it is possible to introduce boundary conditions where we do not fix the, the vertical axis, but only fix the horizontal axis to simulate a kind of continuity. But I'm not sure if that's possible. Uh, I was not following the last one. The horizontal axis, what do you mean with that? Um, as in that... Uh, in the simulation or in the in the simulation yes yeah. so that you have you don't have these cavities basically or that we can simulate that the beams will continue and provide an uh, uh instead of an inch a kind of clamping condition at the end but it's allowed to vertically move okay i see mm -hmm. um okay um, super exciting. I think uh, that's already pretty extensive in terms of how, the, uh, <laughs> how much computing power you um, used. <laughs> um, I think in terms of the very first um, conceptual idea, I would be interested, interested in seeing how the so how the um, position of the columns also um, starts a relationship with the, with the slab on top. Um, I'm not sure if, if I understood correctly, but I guess now you say one of these cells is then repeated, kind of, um, so the neighbors are kind of the same, or would they, would each of those cells um, have have a different column arrangement or a different right. arrangement right. of the openings? Yeah, yeah. So these would actually either be rotated or uh, simply moved. So you'd start getting irregular beam connections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but the challenge is that they are now designed as independent. And if you would design it as a continuous system, then the beam pattern will also be influenced in between. Yeah. Um, and that's something we can at the moment only simulate by um, extending the simulation, uh, doubling the simulation space and really making the connection and simulating everything as once. Well, I was really wondering if we could just tweak the boundary condition to simulate only a tiny part and then um, connect them. Yeah, what I guess, what I guess would be interesting is to see um, I guess, George, you were already kind of um, hinting at that, right? So what would happen if you introduce a second level? Um, where maybe in your, like, I guess maybe it's interesting to, to, to shift, to shift the, the cells in the second level, right? So maybe, maybe wherever you have an, an, an opening on the, on the first level, right? You would have the the center of the cell mm -hmm. um, on top of it, maybe I don't know. And then I guess if you if you say like really you want to have each cell as a kind of individual um, structure, as as you say, Chris, right? So maybe maybe you don't want to have it continuous, right? Even though maybe that would be structurally I don't know beneficial, but. Uh, but you want to you want to really produce each cell separately, right? Um, then I guess in in terms of the in terms of the spatial experience, I guess it would be also good to to kind of distinguish um, whether they are actually touching, right? 
maybe there are slightly different heights or there is a small gap in between mm -hmm. even though i guess then the question arises how would you transfer from one level to the other on the second floor right but i think i think that could uh, that could lead to very interesting spatial constellations Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, agree with you. And uh, actually, for the f uh, very first uh, concept, uh, I think now you are trying to use this uh, like a standard module to form a more more uh, extensive. Use a module that could be repeatedly to form a large larger structure. But in my mind, if you want, if if you can call this a system that's uh, developed with this module, maybe if you could try, if you can change your module into a like a parametric module, so it could be more adaptive to some. Uh, different uh, site locations, uh, uh, context, maybe, and uh, the module may vary from each other, but they share the same parameters. I think what we yeah. can do there is make maybe two or three different alternatives, but to, to reduce the amount of calculation power, I think we would um, simulates the, the variety by means of rotating these modules in different, uh, um, giving them different rotations that they are not simply copies, but they are also place rotated uh, towards each other. But I think we can do something with two, uh, with two or three different ones. Yeah. So I guess I guess this this can be broken down in let's say a conceptual decision and the decision of pragmatic. Um, Time management until Friday, right? So I guess, I guess conceptually, um, it would make a lot of sense uh, based on the system and the and the possibilities with the with the technologies that we're using um, to really differentiate each of the cells, right? Um, but I totally agree. Like if you have twenty cells and then each of them takes I don't know maybe half an hour or or even more for computing. It's gonna be a bit of a um, a long time to just render all of these. Um, but then I think you could still use, you could still explain the concept of how this kind of variation could um, lead to a more spatially um, 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 differentiated um, structure, right? And then, um, and then maybe, maybe in the in the final images, you you will still copy some of them and just kind of make them look uh, different. I think that's totally that's totally fair, right? I guess I guess we will see the the tectonic articulation and your your. Um, um, agency over the structure mostly on one cell, right? And then the, the arrangement of all the cells is mostly like a, let's say, a conceptual argument, maybe. Or maybe when you explain that, it's it's totally okay to to use maybe simple slabs even, right? And just just explain how you would want to to arrange the space and how you would. Uh, Okay, we're running really short in time. Uh, maybe it was a bit ambitious to say that we're running through 10 groups um, in one hour. Um, I, th I think we'll just go on until 10, um, then start Hannah's uh, lecture on time, but probably we would need to um, shuffle the time on in, the, in the session two and accommodate a bit more feedback time. What do you think, Jaihua? Yes, I agree. Okay. So let's go on with group three. Um, if you're ready. Mahmoud and Misba. Yeah, hello, good morning.
And uh, thanks, uh, George and Chris Red. Uh, great project. So, um, uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. The basic idea, I think, for us was to kind of exploit how much cantilever we can get from a single slab by minimizing the number of support columns. So we started off like from a, a star shape, and then we just modified the geometry to see how we can just elongate it and and uh, play with the column system. So we so we just have three columns, and this would probably be the longest base. I've put together a short PDF with just all the results. I was having some issues in getting the visualization results, but I'm going to try to increase the number of iterations because you mentioned that might be a problem. And the boundary, the center lines are very simplistic in this, so I don't know if that's a problem or like I should I should work on just making it more complex. And this was one of the iterations. The second iteration was just like modifying that existing geometry to get just so that was like a, a wishbone structure, and this one is more like a linear structure. And it has a very similar center line and structural analysis. Also thought about how to stack them. If it's that kind of geometry, we can get like interesting perforations or like ho holes in the middle. Uh, another thing we were also considering is having axial perforations on the slab. We, we don't know if that's possible. So it would be a mixture of the timber generation along with perforations on the slab. I'll just share another screen. This is just some analysis, the, the resulting analysis from this. So like I said, I was having problems in getting the visualization structural analysis for both the options. This is option one and option two. I think I can, we can move on to Mahmoud. He also has some, a few tests. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually decided to kind of uh, start with brainstorming at the beginning, but we agreed on the main principles. Uh, we, we just uh, wanted to have, uh, have it to be I mean, more sellable to architects. So that means uh, we still, in this stage, uh, wanted to have freedom, more freedom in deciding on the uh, location of columns. As uh, the basic field. So uh, I also have two options. For example, this one, which I started with, it's very uh, uh, top down approach. I mean, like very defined uh, boundary. And uh, instead of defining the column, uh, just we decided to uh, start defining the, the piece or initial piece. And then since the the dimensioning of the piece is not really uh, not set yet. So we'll just uh, choose any location on the beam and then it will be like another parameter for beam height in the next stage. So in the first exploration, uh, I just noticed that uh, even if it's a symmetry uh, object, the solution was not even that symmetry. I mean, you can find similarities, but it's kind of uh, kind of different. 
So basically, this is the boundary, the blue lines are the initial field, which is also uh, as an input from the user, and the, the regions and the field layout is from the uh, photo search. The second option is uh, the best. Uh, it's a bottom up approach. Uh, we started with uh, data poles with random <coughs> with random points, and then introduced the initial field. Uh, yeah. And this uh, must be uh, yeah. And then that was the solution for yeah, that was kind of next bottom up of the uh, approach. And uh, I think it, it falls into the multi. Uh, multi-story independent complex. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. I really like the the metaball um slab. I think this is exactly kind of resembling shape a shape that you would really struggle with to build <laughs> at the current moment. But I think this is really this would be really a strong um probably concept to, to try to solve in my point of view. I'm not sure these kind of curves, they are not a support or is this, um, what are the, the, the two blue curves in the middle? Those are initial themes, which is actually an input from the user. Or okay, so okay, okay. The main theme, uh, wait, but who is the user? So the architect or the designer. So oh, that's you, right? Yeah, for now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I guess I guess um, I guess um, for for the simulation, this is also a good. Uh, maybe maybe you can also um, check back with uh, Chai Hua. Um, I think there is some kind of uh, s probably some kind of setting. Um, um, um not fitting with the with the geometry right exactly. um i i'm not sure um yeah i think i think the we can we can also have have like linear supports or curves as supports i think that would be that would be okay um in the end you could even say maybe that those are just like a, an an array of um of columns, right? Um, I would definitely put the put the support in some kind of relationship with this lab, also, right? Right now, it it really seems like a, as you say, as a user input, right? That maybe maybe it doesn't really um, at the moment just wants to explore, like, okay, what happens if I just put this uh, um, line inside, right? But I think. I think from a design perspective, it would be really interesting to see both the slab and the support um, enter in some kind of relationship where they, let's say, talk to each other. Right? Um, yeah, okay. So maybe maybe you guys can also check your, your files uh, with Jaihua and let's, let's go on to the next group. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Uh, uh, we have two pavilion concepts, and the first is mine. Um, I'm I'm sorry for that because my software crashed crashed and before the class, so I only have two screenshots and a uh, uh, and uh, uh, earlier version of my uh, of my model. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the screenshot. Uh, I designed this um, by the concept of the standard 17 gallery, uh, I want to start it with the structural aspect. And I think 
Mm, so I want to have a trial with the with uh, with her uh, aspects, uh, with her concept. Um, so I I want to, mm, I want to use the uh, fourth floor to show by the along with the pavilion, and so I designed this and um. That that can I I also have a con, um, construction con, um, uh, aspect made by by building this because I think we can place the robot at the center of the empty places and uh, that can avoid the uh, collides and all, all the other other problems that may concern in the uh, construction procedure. Uh, that and here is. The early version of the model, and you can see that. And the second is the is Wenjun's um, concept. She's right now in the train to Shanghai, so she cannot present it by herself, and I present her for her. Uh, she used the gaps between uh, on the pavilion to uh, define the um, to define the space, and also let the uh, let through to uh, flash it on the ground. And that so that she can define the spa uh, defend space. And I don't know more concepts and ideas of her, so maybe she can introduce the, her concept later. Yeah. Okay, great. I uh, I really like this kind of um, undulating um, slab. It's also, I think it's also um, interesting to see that the optimization result kind of, I guess would resemble like a, a spine of an organism, right? So a vertebrate um, um, organism. I think that really, that's, that's really a, a fun, fun connotation that maybe in my point of view, it would be interesting to explore that a bit more, right? so, to see, um, do you know what I mean? Um, uh, yes. So I guess, I guess what I'm saying is that, for example, here, right, with, uh, with this kind of um, uh, situation here, this is really, mm -hmm. this is really interesting in terms of, uh, how it resembles a, a natural organism, right? So I think that's that's really maybe something that uh, that would be interesting to explore a bit, right? A bit more. Okay. I think that's already pretty pretty cool. And the software seems to be working for both of you, no? Oh, wait, actually, you're mm -hmm. three, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and you may want to re run the optimization with more, it uh, with more iterations, to, so you can. Uh, yeah, I, I I crashed in, in the uh, in the uh, in the full, uh, in the later uh, in the more uh, iteration, and so I only have this qu uh, screenshot, and that I, I cannot find that. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, let's let's uh, continue quickly with group five. Then we have half of the groups before um, Hannah's presentation. Keshin, Vicky, Sisha, are you guys here? Yes, maybe Vicky can take a lead and start.
Do you guys have uh, connection problems? I, I can't hear. I can't hear anyone. Uh, maybe we can, you can share your screen now, and maybe I can do the audio. Should I share the screen of your upload? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Okay, well, let's do that. Um... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, our concept here is like mimicking some natural growth or branching to build up system of the the alignment and uh, our so uh, I I I don't know if I can fully understand and explain the first row and maybe it's more like inspired by some natural erosion pattern and the second one is more like a curved differential growth which mm -hmm. is to achieve a continuous lab structure based on the experience of space and design of the routine so participant or circulation here and uh, the first one I think is to I think is to achieve a modular system with, indi with individual panels and uh, can you go to the next yep. page yes so I think uh, the one on the yeah, top left here is a is an application of the Voronoi system of the uh, column position here, and the one down here is to show the differential growth outline here, and uh, the one on the right here is like we define the the environmental constraints and uh, some intended functional cell presented as circles with different radius. So this radius show like different functions maybe, and also to create some circular openings and to bring some mm. sunlight and illumination. And also in that way, we can reduce the overall quantity of material. And so I, believe that in this way we are different from explore, exploring of the traditional regular boundary condition with just a single closed curve. So here we are questioning the stress state brought by uh, like more like a cantilever structure here and some porous geometry of the slab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I have some connection issue before. Uh, could you please go back to the first page? Thanks. Here. So our, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I couldn't see the first page of the concept. Yeah, so our concept is also get inspiration from the nature and uh, cause I think for this stage, we are trying to define our boundary conditions. So we use two scripts and we haven't decided yet to uh, use which one. And the first one, as you can say, it's like um, you uh, 
um, define the column position and use a uh, Veroni to separate the space. And the second one is uh, we have the route, which is like some meandering route for the visitor first, and then we generate the curve from the uh, simple route. Uh, and this script we use is kind of a founding curve script uh, that makes this curve um, keep iterating, but avoid touching each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, excuse me, can I add on something? Sure. Um, can you hear me? Um, yeah, um, so basically um, the first strategy is we're trying to define the columns um, to form individual slab components um, so that we can join the modules together hey, and compose them. We lost you again. Hello? Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Yep. Um, yeah, so basically um, we'll be using, uh, the first one we'll be using Warnoy um, to define um, different components and then compose together, um, maybe depending on different functionalities. And then the second one will be um, try to design a continuous slab structure based on the experience of the space. Okay. Yeah, I think both of those approaches are pretty cool. Um, um, I think they're very much rooted in this kind of exploration of, of let's say, natural organism uh, organisms at the moment, right? So I think it would be really interesting to see um, what kind of spatial qualities uh, this kind of um, arrangements could bring, right? And maybe that's going to also help you to decide each of those um, routes you want to take on, right? I think this is really um, probably important to, to now, I guess, soon choose choose one of them, right? I think, I think uh, in terms of resemblance, this is uh, maybe pretty similar to, um, to what Jennifer was showing, right? So. Um, so I think maybe, maybe these other structures would be a bit more, um, would bring a bit more variation to the, to the overall group, right? But in the end, it's, it's totally up to you how you want to go forward. I, I just think that, um, that I guess I would, I would start already at the current moment, start to include, um, um, a certain three dimension, uh, a third dimension to the to the investigations, right? Um, but uh, definitely pretty cool. And it seems you also have uh, quite a bit of computing power at at hand. So I think that's great. And I'm excited to see what what comes out of it in the next phase. Could you please explain a little bit more of bringing in the third dimension? Um, I mean, right now these are these are very diagrammatic, right? Um, whereas, um, whereas as architects, I guess we we really are interested in in understanding how could these things um, first form an interesting space, right? And also how can they maybe be stacked on top of each other, right? And how how would that um, add a quality to what we conceive as architecture? Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's not to say that this is uh, not interesting, right? I think it's uh, it's amazingly well done, right? I'm just saying that um, that I guess uh, for choosing which route you want to take and which route you feel um, <clears throat> uh, makes more sense in terms of like a spatial configuration, then uh, then it would be also important to start the investigation of the spatial qualities, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Sure. Okay, great. Uh, can I ask? Yeah. Oh, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, even though we use uh, this kind of spontaneous behavior to design our boundary conditions, mm. we still need to fix some inputs. Uh, at the very beginning. So we wonder uh, if there's any conditions that you can provide for the site or we just uh, decide all of this by ourselves? Um, yeah, you can basically um, find your own site or even um, invent your own site. 
mm-hmm. I guess you you would naturally want to make it, let's say, as relevant as possible. So maybe you can find a common problem that uh, that architects might uh, um, <clears throat> need to engage with, right? Or, or um, common situations within a city, right? Um, okay. And then you you try to tackle it with uh, with your system. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Great. Then um, this means we went through half of our um, of our groups, and if uh, Mahana is ready, we could go on now with the. Uh, with the uh, third expert guest lecture. Um, yeah. Hi everyone. Hello, Hannah. Um, maybe maybe I'll start introducing, and then you can um, say a bit more. Um, so Hannah recently joined ICD um, after finishing the ITEC Master Pro. Right. Is working uh, together with Louis and me also in the excellence cluster on multi-story timber construction, and um, you studied in Cornell before, yeah? yeah, and worked in quite a few offices, I would say worldwide, right? And maybe with that, I'll I'll just hand it over to you, and you can. Can add on if I if I miss something. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I've been around U.S., uh, Norway, Croatia, now Germany, and yeah, just finished um, iTech, and yeah, and now I'm going to just start sharing my screen and hopefully it works. And if there's something wrong, just somehow signal me. <laughs> Oops. Is it black for you or? Okay. It's all good. Okay. All right. So today I'll talk a bit about um, sort of an introductory analysis part of my research, dealing with multi-story contemporary timber architecture, and mostly present um, limitations and constraints within serial and modular construction. And I think. Maybe something is frozen. I don't know if it's moving for you or not. No. 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 Maybe just try to share again. Yeah, I'll start again. Sorry. No worries. I know if it's internet or if it's the full screen mode? Yeah, now I can I can see the okay. second slide. Yeah. And so this research consisted of kind of gathering data to create this giant database of multi-story timber projects. Um, the focus was kind of figuring out some of the characteristics in mid-story construction, but um, it's a full range of projects that are quite low story to almost all uh, high rises. And this database was mostly dealing with um, typology, so typological research rather than some sort of technical um, data gathering. So this study was kind of split into three parts, uh, systematizing recent multi-story buildings, uh, both serial and modular, but also in order to understand what the limits are looking at, what is currently possible single story timber projects and what in general are trends in multi story typologies um, worldwide. So, also looking at concrete and steel construction. The main um, focus, however, and the large body were the recent multi story timber projects, but also unbuilt <coughs> proposals and some currently under construction, some of which you can see here. So this uh, research kind of encompassed 160 projects and kind of currently dealt with around 56 analytical drawings and diagrams. And the sources were um, um, various. So there were a lot of um, timber manuals, 
a lot of detailed publications in timber modules or uh, region specific uh, projects such as Central Europe or UK or for example, the Nordic countries, but also some thesis and of course, um, uh, research papers as well as the Zinark Daily Detail and other timber building databases such as Triple Word, uh, Data Holds, Bownets. Because of these sources also, the project locations are quite um, centered. So they're not uh, covering all of the world, but quite um, Central European focused with a bit of North America. So the first step was kind of establishing um, groupings of the projects based on the structural system. So looking at uh, the post and beam construction, panel construction, as well as um, module. So 3D elements, I think the slide is stuck, but if it moves, it's going to show um, kind of how all of these um, plans and sections were then translated into um, these grids, lines, and module uh, arrangement patterns. So kind of transferring it into the ordering system to identify uh, the rhythm and the rules of organization of each of the systems. So after all of the um, projects were grouped, there was also a comparison criteria for them. So other than the ordering system that was derived from the structure, also massing was looked at in terms of both um, indoor and outdoor space, as well as solid and void relationship in the interior of the building. Also looking at the program and how it's connected to the ordering system and also to what sort of material is used in the building. But in this presentation, that won't be really touched upon since it's really in a detail level and not really visible in drawings. And of course, looking at the permanent spatial layout. So what are the um, kind of space variations possible and how rep repetitious or heterogeneous the spaces are, as you can see on this one example. So when we look at the large body of work and projects, um, there's definitely something to be noticed and that's that the majority of the projects are strictly one system. While there are some exceptions that have begun to kind of combine systems to achieve either multiple programs by combining frame and modules, or in some cases, uh, panel and frame, or also using blue lamb construction to achieve different results. However, in all of these um, projects, what's really uh, standing out is this kind of orthogonality and uh, rigidity that really doesn't seem to be um, going away. So there's kind of just main two typologies almost across all of the systems, either a linear sort of circulation, sort of strip that uh, sometimes gets deformed or a central circulation corridor, regardless of how complex the massing is. And all of the projects really seem to be giving this sort of spatial effect of strict directionality, single axiality, uh, orthogonality as well is visible. Okay, stuck. Oops. Okay. So when we start looking at some of these um, drawings a bit closer, we begin to notice that, for example, um, although modular systems kind of begin to shift modules a bit, create different patterns, they're still in a way the same typologies and still quite orthogonal. The panel systems, on the other hand, are showing a lot more diverse uh, forms with these curves or rotational elements, while frame pieces still seem to be the most uh, rigid rectangles as the majority of the projects are. So that can also be visible, especially in the massing where at least in the frame projects, the major differentiation happens either through volumetric extrusions or some kind of difference in shades and terracings. When we look at the program for these projects, we can also see that certain systems are linked to certain programs, almost as if 
um, there is a strict delineation what is a frame for, which seems to be mostly office spaces, sometimes retails, rarely um, residential. While panel systems um, are dominantly residential, uh, sometimes hotels or uh, sometimes public programs that um, need some variation, such as the round little theater you may see in blue. The modular, of course, projects are quite reserved for either hotels, student housings, or really projects that are dealing with repetition and mass production of spaces uh, for consumption more than anything else. Also retirement homes. And in these combination systems, this is where we see the most variation in using either educational programs such as schools, um, exhibits and museums, and also theaters. So in a way, even if a form may look really uh, complicated, as can be seen here, that might just be a core that is slightly deformed. And in a way, a complex um, project is just a diagram of another project and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So especially visible here in these modular projects that can be seen that Although there might be different sizes of modules, the space or the interior doesn't really change so much at all, at the overall form of the massing. Some of the ways that um, there has been attempts to achieve this kind of big complexity um, is by either playing with variation in facade or balcony extrusions, which is very popular, such as you can see here in the Canopia project but also by bending really simple shapes, such as linear arrays of rooms, such as this Valla Versa project, which happens in panel construction more than any other. But also um, we can see these curved forms of very simple linear um, panel and column for a theater. Another way that complexity is um, seemingly achieved is also through volumetric extrusions where basically the top floor is just a smaller version of the floor beneath it. While another popular method is in these combination systems to have a completely separate volumes that are then put together to create different spaces. The panel systems, um, for example, are showing a bit more uh, diverse range of complexity where Either pieces are and volumes are rotated to achieve massings, but still in quite orthogonal fashion, as can be seen in these kind of X uh, variations of floor plans on the left. And also in the frame uh, projects, there's very slight motions to move past the grid, which happen either in distortions or in these very, very slight splits uh, for either site purposes or something such as when the carbon 12 building. So when we look at the heterogeneity or the homogeneity of spaces, these projects for from like a really wide range of them are actually some that are more um, diverse on the inside. And it's not so much actually. So variation is either achieved by combining different modules or simply by changing the span of um, the grid inside, but still maintaining this kind of straight orthogonal direction, even um, within the panel and post system. And then there's slight movements within the panels for non-orthogonality, but on a very small scale. So this can be seen in the Tamedia office extension, Bashigiruban, where there's a very narrow bay creating sort of a space or a passageway and then a very large interior space and also um, two different directions meeting, sort of very customized project. Um, this is kind of a special case project from Japan where the spatial variation was kind of pushed all the way to being a generic space and kind of using this more truss-like system as an entire floor to be able to just have a completely free space on the inside. There are some 
projects that actually do have um, different sizes um, in terms of height of spaces, but all of them are almost exclusively achieved by the large double height or triple height space being achieved by not actually being a part of the multi-story construction, but as a separate element. So this is a project that's uh, been finished really recently, Helen and Hart Architects, where this entire atrium is actually just a glazed facade piece so that only has a roof above it. And the entire interior or this L-shaped is actually the multi-story timber part that is, again, a, a linear array of office spaces in a way. So this kind of um, almost absurdity in, in repetition is not only in plan, but is even more visible in um, vertical axes. So when we look at these projects, although sometimes massing may seem more complex, all of the floor plans are becoming more and more identical. So the panel systems, for example, right now do offer a bit more variation. So this is a project model C that's um, proposed right now. But even when we look at the floor plans of this project, we see that it's just um, walls on the same lines of the walls beneath it. So not so much differentiation again. And one of the um, few projects is actually using um, sort of more linked digital fabrication is this Mazarin house, a really tiny multifamily house in London where the digital model was actually linked to fabrication and they were able to CNC mill very custom pieces of panels, et cetera. And that is the only reason why this sort of non-orthogonal shape is achieved and uh, funky roofs, et cetera. Um, on a more uh, differentiated story level, there's still some examples in terms of orthogonal uh, projects, but all of them mostly rely on having just the top floor have less walls than the floors below. So in a way, when we look at the current state of the projects, we can definitely see that um, in terms of how different the spaces are, the panel systems in purple are definitely sort of taking uh, the lead while the um, frame buildings, which are definitely um, something that in terms of flexibility of spaces and being more able to adjust spaces and have more openness, they're definitely in a way more homogeneous. And that is probably because of this debate of how generic is usually better than something custom that we're uh, encountering over and over. Sorry, I think it's stuck again. Mm. Yeah. So in a way, looking at um, frame systems was kind of the, the focus, like really focusing on how what's happening with them in terms of the system and um, looking at what are the what is happening in terms of the elements. So horizontal plates, vertical plates, and linear and uh, horizontal and vertical elements. So when we start looking at some of the projects, we see that all of the um, slabs are definitely one directional, and that in panel projects, the spans are ranging from three and a half to sort of four and a half or five meters, sometimes more. But then in the frame construction, well, which is stuck, the spans are definitely becoming larger. And that's becoming more focus of the development, but my slides are stuck, sorry. Yeah, so you can kind of see some of the examples here. And again, this Tamedia office that almost has this large span of 11 meters in a way, but then also a great uh, structural depth. Yep. So when we look at single story timber projects, we see that there there's sort of already 
a greater range of slab. Sorry, my dog started barking. Sorry, I can't stop him. Lola. Yeah, Lola. No, I think I'm a stranger. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, it's good now. <laughs> yeah, so in single story construction, we can see that there's already um, a wider range of slabs, not just spanning in one direction, but it's also because uh, the projects are smaller and none of these roofs are actually in a way inhabitable on top and they're treated more as this cultural uh, one-off element. But, and we also see that there's this um, kind of change happening in the mixed-use typology, maybe not exactly in the projects that are being built or are built, but definitely in some of the more theoretical proposals, such as these, where variation across stories and having open corners, non-orthogonal shapes and forms on the inside is really something that is being pushed for. And definitely there are built examples where the structure isn't really just a matter of efficiency anymore, but also playing, um, especially in concrete and steel, a design role of guiding views and actually taking you through an experience where neither of the stories is the same, but also mostly because of the rise of the mixed use buildings, they're not even the same heights, the floor plates. And also they're becoming more sculptural elements, the columns, such as with splits and so on, and voids on the inside. So these are kind of just some of the few examples, but I think some of your projects that you were showing, the proposals, were already becoming more as what digital technologies could bring to multi-story construction, especially timber that's more malleable, that could be these openings, cantilevering spaces, non-orthogonal spaces, and spaces of great spatial variation. So this is currently what's happening, and I hope that uh, in the future, it'll be more like something you guys are trying out today. Yeah. And the last slide is stuck, but it's just, I don't think it matters. So um, yeah, I hope that, uh, yeah, you guys are really excited about your workshop and figuring out how to make more with timber and robots. And that's it. And sorry about the dog. <laughs> yeah, and I hope I left time so you can catch your five groups that you have left that you're behind with schedule. So, Should I stop share so I can also look at the question thing? I only have one screen with me. Yeah, but it's also fine if there's no questions, then you guys have more time to go through your um, groups. Okay, there is already the first question. Maybe I'll just uh, read it out. Um, for the live stream also, everyone is invited to ask uh, questions. Um, Mahmoud is asking, which clients do you think would value flexibility over rigidity? Hmm. 
I guess that would be some kind of future thinking real estate agents, because sometimes when you build something with a specific purpose of turning it into student housing, and then it's made out of either really thick, um, I don't know, panels or even modules, it would be really hard to convert it later into, I don't know, a, a large apartment because of acoustics, these are then also thick walls, but also structural, and that's really hard to adjust later on. And I think there's kind of more people taking into account what happens later on with buildings in terms of their life cycle. So repurposing buildings is definitely something that people are thinking about now. Yeah. I think definitely also, I mean, from my, from my understanding, um, timber construction really in that case is on a, on a, on a tighter spot than uh, concrete. So uh, what we, um, what maybe typically the, the opportunities are for a developer in the, in the, in the, in the design of a commercial building or whatever um, is very much further restricted in timber construction. Maybe I think that at the current moment, I think that's maybe just an estimation, but I, I guess there is a lot of developers that have the urge or the, the, the will to build something in timber but then get somehow realized that uh, that the that the specific um, development that they had in mind maybe already with a with a design from an architect of how space space uh, spaces should be um, arranged or functions should be combined then somehow fails to be um, be realizable with the with at least I, I heard a couple of uh, these things, these stories, and um, yeah, maybe that's that's also important to keep in mind that maybe the for now maybe it's really also just about offering similar or um, or the same um, qualities that are already possible in other. Okay, Chris also asked something. What is your opinion about changes of the grid system over lifetime versus being stuck with the initial configuration? Are we going to see this in the future? What is your opinion about this? Changes of the grid system do over mm -hmm. over the lifetime. So I guess uh, what like changing where a column is or not wanting to be in a grid. Chris, you want as to? In, yeah. As in changing where the columns would be um, during the lifetime of a building. As that often remains the same currently in the way we build. Yeah, I mean, in a way, the using columns already is more flexible and that enables you to have more changes of walls, which is really good. But I think it's more really about somehow when you're stuck in um, rigid configurations of columns, you still are inclined to just have, I don't know, one view, one axis. And I think changing the initial, this initial grid would kind of give you more options on how to configure your space as well. In a way, I think that's more of a change also to adapt to different site conditions rather than always build a box, which is currently now happening. Maybe I didn't get the question very well. I think that's indeed one of the approaches to get more flexibility. I was uh, indeed just, what crossed my mind is with, with the way we are now using a, 
robotic fabrication in this workshop to kind of strengthen floors. Mm -hmm. I was really wondering if, if we are going to see these kind of applications that we would basically strengthen existing buildings to then take out one of the original columns. I think that would be really cool. I think a lot of yeah. <laughs> building owners maybe that have some columns in a bad spot obstructing some view would also love that. Also, then, then you can have a larger meeting space. I think there is a lot of desire that is being stopped by the technical possibilities. So dreaming is good. And I think a lot of people have that one column they want to move. So <laughs> <laughs> once it starts going. Good, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Before we go on the break. Okay, then break. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks so much, Hannah um really stimulating presentation maybe maybe or hopefully it also gave you guys an idea of um what are the spatial qualities that we that are that could maybe be achieved with the with the building system as we're proposing it here um as opposed to the, the state of the art um, systems and maybe that's really also important to stress that all the projects that you showed, Hannah, are super recent, right? So these are really, most of them are, are buildings that were opened either this year, last year, or I, I guess in the last 10 years, maybe, right? So all of yeah. them, all of them had already um, available, like all the digital tools that we know, all the, um, <clears throat> um automated cnc um cutting of clt and so forth right and still they're really constrained within their um within their technology so i think this really this is really what you're trying to um kind of push forward so um i hope this, this gave a good context for for everyone and thanks so much um for joining us in today yeah thanks for inviting me um, yeah, it was a pleasure. Okay, then thanks, Hannah, and we'll have a break and we'll start, let's say, at 11.10 to keep the half an hour. Yeah. Is that okay for you, Hua? Yes. Great. All right, then. See you guys later. And thanks, for thanks so much for everyone who presented. See you in half an hour.